So we're up to episode 12 now of Ant and Joe's personal development show. And Joe is reading a great book at the moment called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Now, I haven't read this book yet, but Jer said it is fantastic, and he's bringing an idea to the table today. It's from that book, so over to you, Jer. I'll get the idea on the screen. Hello. So, yeah, I'm reading Dr. Joe Dispenza's book uh, on breaking the habit of being yourself. And I think the book is fantastic um, and it resonates with the work that we are doing right now. So in the book, he's speaking about habits and being habitual. And I just thought this line really stood out to me because I did not know this, um, this fact. Um, and he says, by the time we are... 35 years of age we are 80 to 90 percent habitual and I just thought to myself wow that's really really interesting because in the book he you know he speaks about like your um your belief system and where we get our belief systems and how we keep thinking keep thinking the same way which keeps resonating the same kind of outcomes in our life because our body is triggering our mind um, and we keep having the same scenarios the same outcomes and then then he came in to say by the time we're 35 years of age we are 80 to 90 percent habitual and I thought wow so basically we're just on complete autopilot by the time we get to 35 years of age we are just running a set of beliefs that has been created our whole life we're, we're completely on autopilot um there's only 10 percent of our actual subconscious which is not an actual habit like in in a it's just just phenomenal so basically if you had a childhood that was say financially challenging and you know you created all these beliefs around money and that type of thing but by the time you get to 35, that is installed in you and you will just carry on those belief systems running in the background. So you'll always be kind of worrying about money. You'll always feel money's a challenge. You'll spend, always spend more money than you save because that's where we're 80, 90 percent habitual. Everything we do is that is is infused habits. So um, I find that just fascinating because you know, you think when you get to your 35s, 40s, you think you're going to become a man or a woman, like, you know what I mean? You're going to become a stronger person. But actually, going on this fact, you're actually, you're, you're past. So you're always living your past. This is kind of get, hard to get your head around. So you're living with your old belief system. So when you move forward, you're just going to keep bringing up the same scenarios as the past. So it's like a groundhog day. You're kind of you're kind of stuck in the past. Um, and then you're just running on this autopilot person. So you're not actually, dare I say, living in the future. You're actually living in your past, which is quite frightening, to be quite honest. So if everything that we know by the age of 25 is habits of our past, then we, we are just totally stuck in the past. So then we have to be to change that which is vitally important, we'd have to be aware. We would have to have awareness. Um, and it is changeable. You can change your habits, but you need to be aware of what your habits are. And awareness then becomes really, really important because if you're not aware, then you just, you're just 80%, 90% of you are just an autopilot. But if you've got awareness, then you start looking at these habits structures. And you start thinking, well, why did I react like that? Well, why am I worrying about money? Why am I procrastinating? Like, why is this task taking me? Why is this so difficult to do? And you get really stressed. And then you start thinking, actually, there's something going on here. Like, there's something, there's some limiting beliefs. There's this, your belief system. Then you start challenging yourself and the way you think. And that's very, um, that's a very 
oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like a very difficult thing to do. And I think it's a very, it takes a very strong person to do that. And everybody can do it because I've done it to myself. So I just think there's absolutely so much in this. So then, so I'm, I'm, I'm moving into like your limiting beliefs then, which is created from your childhood, which we we have touched on on other shows as well, which is very, very important. But if you have your belief structure um, and you keep thinking that way and acting that way, then that belief structure becomes, you know, it might become a mood. And then a mood becomes like, an, you know, your um, personality. And then it's like becomes a habit. And then that's who you are. That's your attitude then to thinking about money in a certain way. So, so it's vitally important then to have awareness to change that belief structure because you just keep thinking the same way and acting in the same way um and whenever a stressful situation or something happens in life that triggers that thought process you you will react in the exact same way no matter if you're 35 45 55 or 65 um you keep triggering the same the same reactions so um yeah, there's a lot in there's a lot in that line, and um, yeah, what's your take on that, mate? Um, I've covered a lot in that. <laughs> yeah, I've covered a lot in that. Yeah. In that five minutes, bloody hell! Yeah, a lot, a lot in that you've covered, and that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Unless you're aware of this, then you don't know. You think you're the finished article, and you think it's just the way you are if you're not aware of this when actually all you are is a multitude of habits yes and we've actually touched on habits this week and like i mentioned for example like going on social media i need to change my habits when i go on social media now i would never looked at that as a habit before that i would have habits for social media so to give you an example, I was in the habit of going on there and maybe just scrolling through my feed. Whereas now I need to go on there to comment on certain posts, actually be social and, you know, post content and do research and things. So just there, I've just, I've just noted four new habits that I need to do just on social media. Now, who would have thought that it was that intricate and granular i thought it was just a habit of going on social media so if you just take that for as example how many other like thought habits do we have like there's just loads across the board just so many and there's so there's so many little strands of them everywhere and I don't think you're going to be aware of all of them at all the same time, but it's just noticing them as they pick up. If you happen to be doing something that is not productive, for example, then maybe you can pick that strand out and, um, you know, become aware of it and decide what you're going to do with it, whether you're going to keep it there or you're going to change it. Because like Joe said, you can change it. And I think that's really important to understand that, the way habits are formed are just through repetition. That's 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 the way they're formed. <clears throat> through doing the same thing over and over and over again. So if you can find, let's say, a, a habit that's destructive or it's not productive, it's holding you back in some way, if you can find something to do instead of that, a new habit, then all you have to do is do that every single day that one habit and it doesn't have to be nothing major but you do have to do it every day to install the new one and get rid of the other one because you stop doing the other one so when you install a new habit you are getting rid of another one that's the idea anyway but yeah, yeah this can be a scary thought because yeah if you're 35 years of age you're 80 90 percent habitual you're not really aware of it you think you're this is the finished you. You are where you are in life. And if you're not where you want to be, this is where the frustration can kick in, I suppose. 
I think this is where, um, like, um, what do you call it? When you get to 40 and you got a midlife crisis. Mm. Because I think once you get past 35 and you get to 40 and the same shit and the same thought process is still happening, I think your body goes into, like, shock. It actually goes, hold on a minute. Well, I, I'm halfway through my life and I'm, I'm still worrying about money. Mm. I'm halfway through my life and I'm... Just, I'm still not folding my clothes and putting them. I'm still messy. Like, I don't even, you know, I don't make my bed bed sheets or something. You know what I mean? I think your body goes into shock. But I'll give you a really good example because we're touching base on habits and how how habits, um, how if you've got awareness, how your habits, like how you can car crash yourself with habits. So I'm going, this is a personal um Thing I just realized that has happened to me today and yesterday. So I'm a, I'm away in holidays. Today is Wednesday, and I'm going on holidays on Friday. So I'm busy getting all my work done with my business so that I've got it done. And usually, it's extremely stressful at the moment. And usually, I'm like, you know, working like really, really hard, and you know what I mean, really stressed and blah blah blah. But at the moment, it's complete opposite but you know really relaxed I'm completely on top of my work um and then I noticed I had some tasks that I needed to get done today and I was like if I get them done today then my Thursday is really easy and and then I started car crashing myself today I noticed myself doing everything possible not to do those tasks today and I actually had to go to myself what are you doing why, why are you not doing the task that you need to get done today? So tomorrow is easier. And then it clicked with me and went, because my body, every time I go on holidays, is so used to being in stress mode. And it's so used to being under pressure that it's trying to get me back into that stressful place. So tomorrow I got to do those big tasks. And that's really stressful because that's the last day we got to get organized before we go. And I thought, ah, oh, that's it. Sometimes you have to like live it. So if I didn't have the awareness, I spot my body was trying to, and what Dr. Drew Dispenza says, it's actually your cells in your body that are feeding on that chemical that's coming from your brain. And they, they know they want, they want, they want to fire now. And that's a stressful way because that's what they used to. They're going, Hey, Jer, it's the week before we go on holidays. You're supposed to be really stressed out and we're supposed to be getting our dopamine feed of this like stressful chemical. And even though I was in a really good place, my body still tried to car crash me into becoming really stressed. And if I didn't have the awareness, I probably would have procrastinated, not get those two tasks done and then have to do them tomorrow and then be really stressed. And then my body would be happy and the habit would be happy because it's going, yes, you've, that's the habit. You've done this over the last 10 years. Why are you changing? Mm -hmm. um, so that's why awareness is really, really important. And yeah, and I done. I, I actually said to myself, what am I doing? Get those tasks done. They're done. And tomorrow won't be stressful. So I literally broke the habit. And one of the other reasons, and I'm going to touch on this, is why I'm not stressful. is because I've been removing limiting beliefs for the last, eight months and that is the main reason why i'm in control of my work because um i've changed my thought process um and everything is actually getting done in an orderly fashion which is fantastic and um yeah so th th this this stuff does really work if you if you really have the awareness and you start removing your limiting beliefs and you start reprogramming your subconscious for more empowering beliefs um things do change i removed the limiting belief about six months ago or five months ago that i'm an unorganized person i'm an unorganized man i removed that because myself and aunt have a at be the limitless you we have a belief removing um system where we can remove limiting beliefs um we do that with our with our personal development coaching we do with our clients so i used that structure and now when i needed it i was organized um and where i am living proof that this it, this 
what we are teaching our clients does work because we are living proof. We've gone through it. Um, we learned the program by doing it. So it, it does really work and it's, it's really, really powerful. And it, that's that's what you want in life. You want to have non-stressful times with your family when you're going on holidays because that's actually supposed to be a really nice experience. And it's always been a stressful experience for me. So um, that that is the power of habits. So you do have to be really aware because they will they will come back and try and car crash you, even though you're in a good place. And if you weren't aware of that, what happened like yesterday or today, you would have just put it down to, oh, well, going on holiday is stressful and leave it as that. Yeah. When actually it doesn't need to be. It's all just fixed ideas in our subconscious mind. Ideas. Yeah. Our habits that we got emotionally involved with they're in our subconscious mind like you say they're in our cells as well so they're ready to fire they want to say this is normal but it doesn't have to be and that's that's the point that we're trying to get across here it doesn't have to be the reason why you're 80 to 90 percent habitual by the time you're 35 is because you've spent a lot of years doing the same things every day that's how habits are formed so that's how your idea is of the world because what you do ultimately leads to where you are and what you experience so the trick is spotting them then deciding what you want to do instead of them and then doing them every day and a habit is an idea that's fixed in the subconscious mind it's something you do without giving any conscious thought to it so you can drive your car without really thinking about it. Your mind can be on other things. You can tie your shoes with your mind being on other things, breakfast, whatever. So the idea is to get conscious. And uh, yeah, Jer's always also touched on limiting beliefs, which are also fi ideas fixed in the subconscious mind. But they are installed a little bit differently. They're installed with a little bit of emotion normally a little bit of negative emotion but because the subconscious mind can only accept ideas it will accept those ideas and most of our limiting beliefs we install when we're children but what's inaccurate about them is that when we're sort of 35 40 45 we shouldn't then be identifying with that because that was pain that happened then not now but our body will go into those same emotions and can you suffer because of it. You know, people can break out in sweats. They can get social anxiety, fear, whatever that may be. And that's inaccurate. So like Jer says, we do have a belief busting formula that uh, we teach to our clients to be the limitless shoe. And that is the end of this episode because we're just about out of time. Are we? Wow. Thanks for that, Jer. I'm definitely going to read that book. See you in the yeah. next one. Bye.